Well, I pretty much taught myself to play the piano. I, ever since I was a little kid, I can always remember being just blown away by any musical instrument. Just the sight of it, you know, would just excite me. I, would, I don't know why. I didn't know why at the time. But I'd always want to go to the house, play the drums, you know, and just be part of that. My grandfather and my, my other cousin had a grand piano, and I'd always just, you know, just disappear from the rest of the crew and just be tinkling on it, you know. Just it, How old were you at that time? Little. I was like seven, and eight years old, and it just called to me, you know, and I didn't know why, but later, not too many years later, like probably when I was 11 or 12, I started writing my own stuff and on the piano, and just taught myself. Started from two simple chords, and then I just got more and more um, complex as I went. In an empty space, six feet apart feels like miles to my heart. We will get beyond this phase to another star. Stronger than we are. I knew I wanted to put a band together, and it was just me. And I played the piano, and I had these few songs that I wrote. And I had a friend that had a guitar. I, I don't think he could play it at all, you know, but it looked cool. And so I said to him, let's start a band. And he couldn't play the thing, you know, so I, basically he was going to stand there and just fake it, you know. And, and for at least a couple years before that, I'd always hear drums wafting through the neighborhood. Live great drumming just wafting through the neighborhood you know and i was always wow where's that coming from you know and finally i pinpointed where it's coming from who was doing the drumming and it was the guy was like he was seven years old and he was as good as anything i've ever heard how'd you meet tom how'd i meet tom let's see i remember his house being built gleason house like I said, I was young, but I remember it. And then, you know, all of a sudden in the neighborhood, there was a new kid, blonde haired kid. He had the bangs, like, you know, kind of looked like a little Dutch boy. <laughs> and, uh, <he's, laughs> so uh, I guess we started playing Army together, is what we did, you know. He, uh, Tom Gleason had this cool machine gun. I think it was made of wood or whatever the hell, but it looked cool. And no, oh, his made the noise, too. <laughs> like he would do. <laughs> And so I had my mom bring me up to lame drugs, and, and I got one, too. Mine didn't make as cool of a sound, but anyway, I got one. So that's how that's how we started hanging around, just playing Army. And then in those weeds, we would play in those weeds and stuff, you know, hide and run and stuff like that. And uh, one of the, one day, he, he kicked me out of the weeds. He was a, he was an a-hole, if you will. <laughs> I don't know what it was and what, why he did, but he's like, get out of my weeds. These are my weeds. And I'm like, what, what? And then I totally remember he took the butt of the gun and, and hit me on the thigh, and I, I, I think I cried and ran home, so, uh, <laughs> but, uh, seriously, yeah, <laughs> so anyway, soon after that, uh, he, uh, next thing I know, he, he comes, uh, to my house, so we marched over to his house, knocked on his door, and said, hey, you want to be in our band, <laughs> and he just asked me to, um, to be in his band, and he's like, okay, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll be, I guess he, he heard my drums, you know, wafting out of the playroom, like I said before, and uh, he just came over and asked me to be in his band. From that moment on, you know, I taught him how to sing harmonies to my songs, and he would naturally play it, and we just did it all day long, <clears throat> every single day. So you forgave him about the machine gun? Then? Of course. <laughs> I probably said, hey, man, you were a freaking asshole. And he was like, I'm sorry, you want to be in my band? I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Shines through the greenhouse windows, emanating from.
How did we meet? It's a That's good a, story. Yeah. It's a good story. It's, Whenever Tommy would come over to pick Tommy Contreras up, he'd drive up and he would pull in front of the house that I was babysitting, which was next door to Tommy Contreras' house, and he would beep the horn. And the little girl I would babysit for knew him and adored him. She was about three years old, and she would run to the door and she would scream, Tommy Geeson, Tommy Geeson, Tommy Geeson. <laughs> And I would look outside, and we would just make eye contact, and then I would walk away. And we never talked. We never said a word to each other. So that's how I got to know who he was. He was Tommy Geeson. <laughs> and so then I, it was probably a, a couple of years later, right? A couple yeah. years later, I moved to Point You're, Pleasant Beach. Yeah, the band was uh, in full swing. You know, we were already doing our thing. We had a lot of people coming over all the time to practices, and we were practicing a lot every day. Tommy brought me to his house first, Tommy Contreras. And he, um, before practice started, he wanted to make sure that he treated me properly. So he, he true gave gentleman. Me a, he was a true gentleman. He, he uh, treated me to some peanut chews and a <laughs> bottle of YooHoo. And so, um, you know, I was well fed, and we headed over to Tommy Gleason's house, uh, which is around the corner. And I had my bottle of YooHoo in hand, and um, we got to the front of Tommy's house, and he was just strategically placed in front of his house, standing there in his leather jacket, his sunglasses on, and he looked up at me and he said, hey, how you doing? And I said, good, how you doing? And then she's on my lawn, we're talking on the lawn here, and she has an empty bottle and she just heaves it, just throws it right on the grass, <laughs> just littered right in front of me. I, I didn't even, <laughs> I, I still don't know what to say. Did you... I should go I, I make you not, find it and clean it up. I was not very environmentally <laughs> sensitive at 14 years old. I think you were nervous. Say. I think, no, nah, I wasn't. <laughs> so she discarded her her litter, uh, and uh, I overlooked that because she was really pretty. But he was considerably older than me at the time. Four years is not a big deal, but when you're 14 years old in high school and you're out of high school, those are big differences. So... Um, you know, I, I didn't really know if we were really kind of, you know, close enough in age to, to go anywhere. But I just was really enamored with the band. So the next thing I know, I was in the front seat of Tommy Gleason's car. And Tommy Contreras was in the back seat. And Tommy drove me home. And uh, that was the beginning of <laughs> what turned into a very long relationship. How much do I owe you for that? <laughs> But explain how that I would pick you up from school, like how you, you actually would ditch a lot of times. Okay. Like I said, school came pretty easy to me, and although Tom would 
pick me up for lunch and often not return me to school, <laughs> I still manage to maintain a straight A average and, and excel in all my classes. So somewhere around my senior year, um, I was asked to come out of gym class that I was wanted in the principal's office. And when I went into the principal's office, my mother was sitting there and um, there were multiple notes that were what I thought were cleverly handwritten by me at the time. <laughs> Um, and they had totaled up my absences and they were, you know, let's just say excessive. And they promptly suspended me for three days uh, my senior year, which then gave us more time to go back to New York. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yay, free pass. <laughs> What are your fondest memories from Wonder Space? My fondest memories from Wonder Space. <laughs> have to say that it was just the passion with which we played not caring about anything else not caring about the music business or trying to write a commercial song we played from our hearts and it was pure unadulterated joy playing music with a group of people that were really close like a family like brothers and we just played for no other reason but it was a self-indulgent exercise for a tree is a living thing, just like me and you. Stands tall in the window rain, crying inside for you. For a tree's best friend is a bird or a dog. Look at all they do for you in the heat of the day. A song for a tree. We eventually kind of said, all right, we're going to split off. And a few of us, the guys left. But with the remainder, we, we then kind of uh, brought in a few new members and decided to, to change the name because I changed my name to Sutton Thomas as a, you know, as a stage name to go more of a, you know, a, mar a branding, a marketable you know, name. And we just became Sutton Thomas Band. Whoa! Two, one, two, three, four. Then I miss while I've been going crazy. I've been wrecked to restless, resting hazy. I've been living a reckless kind of lazy. All because of a lying, cheating lady. I cover my pain and don't go away. Everything slows and turns to gray.
still inside You were gone to touch but not to feel So long ago I wonder was it real Or just lies In the crowded world where we hide There are seasons named for things we try Spring and fall, I recall, we're a lover's right We gave up Who said our heads were ever screwed outside Say what you like, say what you like But we did as we pleased Say what we like, say what we like but Then did I leave So the big day was uh, fast arriving where uh, she was going to come to Nashville and we were going to meet for the first time in what, 26 <laughs> years. Six years. Yeah. I of course get off the plane and realize that in order for me to meet him at baggage in Nashville airport, you have to go down an escalator and it'll take you right into baggage. So I know I'm going to like have to make a grand entrance from this escalator. And she's always cool, cool as a cucumber so guy. So I'm like from the top of the escalator I had like struck about eight different poses. I wasn't sure which was the good one. And I'm watching this whole thing from a and distance. And she comes down and she's like completely lost. She starts walking the wrong way and she's totally <laughs> and I'm just like that's the same damn girl I left. And finally she, she's like walks back the other way and I stood up and, all and she of a sudden, saw he me. Stands and like, up. He looks exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same. So June 25th, we reconnected. And on July 14th, so three weeks later, we were just basically telling each other we'd never stop loving each other. It was about three weeks. And yeah, and, and we realized that the old us and the new us were pretty similar. I mean, we that's why we could make all these decisions without seeing each other, because we knew we were the same people. We, had, we hadn't changed. Uh, so, we we already decided kind of, you know, when we were going to get married. We, we talked about everything before we ever even saw each other again. Wow, that's neat. Yeah. And we, we both, we said we should move in, we should get a place. We both found this house independently of one another. Yeah. And we sent it to you. I found a really great house. She so said yeah, same I found a house too. And it was and the, the same, same house. house. Yeah, this house. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's a bunch of weird little... Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was the most natural thing in the world. Yeah. And then drove back to New Jersey together and we reintegrated with our families together. Our families hadn't seen each other in 26 years. He came with me to my mom's house and I went to him to his family's house for Thanksgiving and we all reintegrated over that weekend. And now they're all together and yeah. it's a very good situation. Yeah. So meant to, meant to be. Your fingers firm on ivory keys. My skin.
There's a cut on my face from the night before And I drank like a fish and slept like a dog Couldn't stand no more so I hit the floor And I don't mind that my dreams are filled with lust For the sobering and the morning light Waking me up I'm not that in touch I'm not someone What's wrong with my hair? Everything. It's only dust. It's a furrow in my brow from a worrying sick and a permanent frown like a bad magician with no way out of ruining the trick. And I don't mind that I never quite adjust.